place. Um, him and his wife, Sam, have really built up a great short-term rental business and have they have property management. He's also part owner in a mortgage company and he is one of my business partners that I'm very proud to say that we're continuing to grow our company that we started in 2021. So without me blabbing further, Matt, please take the floor and you have our absolute and undivided attention. Well, thank you so much, Eric. Uh, I definitely appreciate that. Um, yeah, our uh, our journey began a handful of years ago. I think we started with a flip. I think that was the first thing we did. Um, and before we knew it, we started with a, a very large scaling, our baby REIT. And then we started buying a bunch of property together. And uh, now we're, we're real estate agents alongside each other at our brokerage. And we just uh, put in an offer on a 12 unit we're really excited about too. So, you know, at this point, um, I have properties, uh, the majority of them are in Michigan. Uh, I have an eight unit uh, boutique hotel in California. Um, and it's, they're all keeping me quite busy. Um, the majority of my day is spent helping people figure out mortgages and properties to buy for short-term rentals at this, at this point. Um, a lot of people are buying in Michigan right now. They found that it's the Midwest is best. Uh, it's, I'm sure you can imagine most of the people that you hear when you hear them talking about the Airbnb space, they're talking about the Sun Belt states, right? California, Florida, Arizona, Texas, things like that, stuff along the coast, um, North Carolina. Um, and a lot of people don't talk about the Midwest because there hasn't been a lot of data. Um, but the truth is, anybody from Michigan, uh, your family has been traveling up north since you can remember. Um, you all spent a week at a cabin somewhere on a lake, and that was kind of the thing. So we just, you know, once Airbnb became a great platform for allowing that access, um, we saw a huge opportunity. And with a lot of mom and pop run um, small cabins and resorts kind of going up for sale lately, um, I'm hoping to be the number one buyer, at least alongside with Eric. So that's kind of what we've been doing. And um, I'm kind of an open book. So, you know, if you guys have questions, and you know, I'm happy to answer. I uh, wasn't completely sure of the format here, but I could blab on and on just like Eric and I kind of have that, that similar gift of gab. Um, but yeah, I mean, what what do you guys want to know about? Like I presume short terms, uh, boutique hotels, anything in particular? I guess I'm more curious myself personally from the short term space. I don't know about anybody else if they have any feedback. Sure, I, I can definitely talk about that. Um, okay, from the short-term space, uh, it all started for me. I'll tell you how I got started and where we're going now, okay? Um, I started in a city called Wyandotte, Michigan. Um, that was my first... Uh, are you from uh, Michigan, Rob? I'm from Boston. Boston? Okay, we're all over. Okay, so the city with... It's a very sleepy, cute city along the Detroit River. Um, there's an older population there. There's not really much, uh, in terms of hotels, um, motels in the area. And I just kind of felt like when I had this vacancy on one of my units, I was like, you know what, this might be the opportunity to, to try it. Um, I said, what's my loss, right? I'm going to have some furniture costs, some vacancy from lack of renting or so I thought is my worst case. And I looked around the area and said, okay, well, some people, there's kind of a cute little downtown area. Some people like to fish there. Um, there's a, a really good um, hospital. You're not too far from downtown Detroit. You're not too far from our main metro airport. I said, you know, if this fails, it's fine. I can take that risk. I went for it, right? And by the second month, cash flow wise, I was positive. And I was like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. I didn't expect that. Um, and it kind of continued to grow. And I said, you know what, let me go ahead and try another one. Um, tried another couple uh, cities. I got, before I knew it, I was at 10. Now I'm at 30 short-term rentals. And so at this point, I feel like I have a pretty good taste of like a variation of cities. There's only been one city that has been tough for us, I'd say. Um, but that's, we actually, I had one in, uh, in Hazel Park too, but just the, you learn differences between cities. Some cities are very pro, some cities are very, uh, against i wouldn't say that that city was necessarily against short term but the way they approached it as a you know i can i, I consider short-term rentals as like the, they're in their adolescent phase um you know their kids everybody's oh that's cool that's cute but now they're awkward they're funny we don't know if they're gonna become upstanding adults or if they're gonna become like messed up 
children there we are you know adults um so we're trying to figure out what happens next right um because we're going through this major regulation phase in michigan you know we're hoping that this big bill passes that says they're no longer bannable um i do think that's the direction this is going to go but that doesn't mean there won't be regulation so you need to be very keen on the changes that may or may not come and you want to be neighborly because you know, the, the only issues we've really had have been largely due to neighbors or locals that just don't don't want this this trash, this whatever it is. It's it's hard to be a trashy Airbnb with a 4.8 average, right? Like most of those people, you know, we're we're pre-vetting all these people before they even stay. Um, and usually if they don't have any reviews, we don't. We you know, it depends on the, the property, depends on, you know, we we co-host for people as well. So co-hosting means you manage for people for units that you don't own. So there's there's some of that going on too. Um, but you know, I, I really feel like Airbnb is here to stay. And you know, some people think, oh, Airbnb's new, it's gonna die before it gets started. Absolutely not. If you really think about it, again, Airbnb is just the marketing platform, right? Short-term rentals have been around as hotels, as resorts, as getaway weekend cabins, week-long cabins for, I don't know, since since I can remember. Um, and I do think that that's here to stay. I think, unfortunately, though, with Airbnb becoming so much more popular of a marketing channel um, and all the growth, I think people are now bothered by it. But I do think that amidst all that there's gonna be enough people that stand up fight back and it's going to be here to stay even if you look at like some cities that have fought back for long-term rental situations where you know a city may be enforcing new regulations or fines or fees that are just ridiculous um i can think of three around here in michigan where once people did a full pushback against the city they won three for three um, I haven't heard of anybody losing when everybody got together and said, hey, we're, we're not going to take it anymore, right? Um, because because uh, typically it just comes down to property ownership rights and it seems like 99% of the time you're protected. As long as you're not doing anything crazy, anything illegal, you should be able to handle your property as you, you see fit. So that's kind of how I got started. Um, again, all the way back to the wine dot days. And now you know, our big thing is when we look at properties or we're trying to vet which one's going to be the next good buy, you know, we're looking, we're, we're, we now have some data with AirDNA, um, Rabu, oh, it's another one, STR Insights, that's the one I particularly use. Um, AirDNA is the one that everybody talks about, though. STR Insights is a little bit newer, but they do, they approach it differently, and I kind of like it if you want to check out that software. Um, but the benefit of STR Insights is it helps you identify other comps, comparable data, in the area and it shows you what they've been able to bring in income wise so then that gives you a chance to kind of reverse engineer what your opportunity to make money on the next property you buy and if i buy a property that's similar to this or if i can do better than the last person that did decent i can probably do you know make a higher margin um so there's there's definitely a little bit of due to like the, the lighter amount of data it's not like a sales comparison comparison right um, where, you know, you're looking at a three bedroom, one bath ranch in an area that's, you know, densely populated with those, you know, you do have less to deal with, but this is also, it's kind of like, you know, you know, with any marketing trend, they always say it's like, it's like a circle. Like as you approach it, it's like, it's like the smallest part of the circle, but as you go through it, you get to the fattest part. And then over time, it kind of dissipates, it gets a little bit smaller. Right. So I still think we're at the beginning of this circle. I still think there's plenty of opportunity and even applying it to the multifamily setting, I know so many multifamily operators that are now starting to apply um, Airbnb to their model. And a lot of people go, oh, no, how, how am I going to make this profitable for me? How am I going to show the lenders that this is an income producing asset and get the cash out refi I need to do? Right. Um, so what do they do now? They're doing something called arbitrage. Arbitrage is when you rent out the unit for a lease rate, a monthly rate to somebody else. Um, and they can make the profit above and beyond the baseline uh, lease rate. So let's say you rented out a unit for $1,000 a month and somebody else thinks that they can make $2,000 a month. Um, so they make so now they're making $1,000 net above what they're paying you as the landlord, the $1,000 um, for rent. Did everybody follow that, the arbitrage effectively? So, so now at this point, uh, I'm seeing a lot of multifamily operators. They're actually starting to, some old friends of mine, they're starting to reach out to us and say, hey, are you interested in being a GP and helping us arbitrage these units? 
Uh, it's been a really fun thing. So we're, we're looking at a couple of deals right now. Uh, one in Arizona, one in Florida, uh, one in Michigan. Um, so it's, it's becoming pretty exciting. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of clout and validity to that approach too. Um, and I think a big worry is in some cities, you could create your own competition, right? Depending on how many units you take over with arbitrage, uh, with, well, having that many units within your multifamily, if you have a hundred unit multifamily unit uh, property and you take, let's say 20 of those units and turn those into um, Airbnbs of some sort in the short-term rentals. Um, you could, you know, if they're all one bedroom units, you know, it's not likely that everybody's looking for a one bedroom unit, you effectively have a hotel, right? But if you have a mixture of units, um, you can kind of dissipate that, that uh, internal conflict that you might've just created. So there's definitely a lot of ways that you can mitigate that. Um, and again, you don't have to do half the building. You don't have to do a fifth of the building. It depends on what you have. Maybe you just want to do 10 units maybe it's 10% of the building. I'm not sure. Um, but I definitely think it's a really good way to keep your occupancy high at a good rate. And also there's another couple of tricks for those, those operators where if you have the right GP, um, they can set up another LSC for you. So really like potentially you could be getting the arbitrage um, differential as well as the lease rate. So there's a few ways you can set up that thing where you can you can really bring in some nice money and you know lower your risk. Yeah. So hopefully I kind of gave you a good rundown, Rob. Um, and I guess uh, is, is there any process questions I can like can maybe dive deeper into or um, applications? Yeah. I have a question. Hey, yeah. Um, so I really like the arbitrage idea and I'm looking into it right now. And mm -hmm. how would that impact the um, the rental application? Like, is there a certain verbiage that you need to put on there, you know, in there to the yeah. landlord? Like, to have, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that's a good question. Um, I would say it depends on who you go about uh, working with. You know, if you have somebody that's close to um, the chest, then maybe you can, you know, you don't have to be as diligent it. about it but yeah. effectively yeah um effectively it's it, it acts similarly to a sublease um and with that intention um i think i guess if i had to give you more more than the actual verbiage that you because it's going to be really more dependent on what state you're operating in because some of those those rental laws will change um but whoever you're working with I think you just want to find that they've had success in dealing with multiple units, um, possibly in that state or that area. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, um, ask them to show you proof of concept of, of visuals, of what they've done and what their ratings have been. You know, some people, there's a lot of people that want to enter the arbitrage space right now, people that don't have ownership in any units. And it's, I, it is my opinion that people that don't own units don't really understand how real, the real estate asset works yeah. so i i would not arbitrage somebody that doesn't own airbnbs or short-term rentals as well i just i just don't think it's a good idea i've seen it happen i've had a lot of people reach out to me and go hey matt i've got a bunch of arbitrages i took over in this building can you take them over for me and i'll you know, they they pitch a higher than normal market price for what those units would be and i, I look at them like hey your furnishing's terrible your listing is terrible. Like there's so many things that are wrong with this. I would, I would, if anything, I'd pay you under market price. And I just don't want to inherit your, your garbage because on top of that, they had a fixed lease rate, right? They have a year and a half left on the lease rate, lease time. Uh, and when they set up, they signed up for a two or three year. And I'm just like, man, I have limited time to get in there. You want me to pay a premium to take it over? Plus I got to pay for additional um, refurnishing, uh, new photos, um, I got to revamp all those listings, which is a lot of man hours. So it's like in some, to some degree, you need to keep all those things in mind when you're dealing with um, the not so great arbitrage out there. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're dealing with somebody that knows what they're doing, they know how to handle multiple units, get them up and running in a good timeline. Um, I've seen, seen it where the multifamily operators allow them two months of free rent and say, hey, take your two months, get these set up. Because I know once we're on, we're going to be hitting this rent rate. And I know that we're going to be covered with good tenants. And typically, you know, you're going to have some type of scary deposit uh, as well. So and, yeah, it all mitigates. But usually, like, for instance, if I, on our next building, um, I have a partner I want to bring in um, in Florida. 
that has been doing a really good job with his units. And rather than like rank him over the coals or like make it such a, a completely, you know, uh, arm's length transaction, like I'm going to bring him on as a general partner. I'm going to mm-hmm. have him run the Florida units and I'm just going to assist. Like, yeah, I could go down there and do it myself, but he's local. He's present. He's strong. Um, he's shown me his units. He's got excellent ratings, um, excellent furnishing taste. And hell, I mean, I would want to stay there if I had a choice of, you know, because of how proximate it is to the downtown area of Tampa. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like, you know, I'd rather stay there than most of the hotels. Um, yeah. well, you know, you got to find, and that's the other thing. Like you have to put yourself in the shoe of, as a guest, would I stay here? Would I not stay there? And like, sometimes you might luck out. You might go, I'm not really sure. And it, and it works out, but you know, you, there's now data, especially in the, the, the Sunbelt States that will be able to kind of direct you more directly, uh, more accurately, um, than what you might find in the Midwest. So, okay. and I think the only other thing I'd add about, um, paperwork wise is definitely don't do only a one year um, or if you do a one year do a, give an option to extend it and they're going to want a flat rate because you know that's the other thing with some people who arbitrage they don't set up their side of the contract well um, they'll set up with somebody that goes hey the second i see you doing well i'm going to take it over as well you know and, and just oh arbitrage. i see yeah um, and that creates again a damaging situation for them to come in and put all that time and money and it's gone um, i think if anything is a dying concept over time, it'll be the people that don't have any way to have ownership interest in the building and are only doing arbitrage. If you're a GP as an owner and you're doing arbitrage, I think that totally can work. Um, but I'm seeing it now. Like I, I dare say, I'm going to say it. Um, there's, there's one larger arbitrage operator, um, pretty, pretty braggadocious. Um, and you know, Oh, look at all yeah. these, you know, it's, you know, big on, on posting all the fame and success, but it can be so short-lived fast money can be, but it goes fast too. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm literally reaching out to those same hotels. I'm going to Burger King, his McDonald's, basically, I'm going to move right across, right into the same building, buy it and say, Hey, your lease is up, take over those units. And I'm, that'll be that. So (laughs) that's the problem. If you get so big, you talk too much, you're creating a target for yourself. If you don't own that asset, you don't get to keep it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, of course. Is there any other thoughts or questions? Any other, I, it's the, the issue is short term. It, it, sometimes it's hard to just talk about because there's so many facets and conversational pieces that you can go into. Uh, I can talk about some deals I've done, um, some of those nets, if that's of interest to you guys. Man, sure. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. So I have an Airbnb in like Lawrence, Kansas, and I'm trying to automate it as much as possible. So I'm using like the apps like Hospitality, you know, Turnover BNB and um, like Price Labs. How are you automating yours since you're co-hosting and operating others as well? Are you using, is it Hospitable? Is that what you're using? Ho- yeah, Hospitable. I use Hostfully for like the guidebooks. Yeah, those words, I, I'm confused. Them too. <laughs> yeah, they kind of, they're all over. But yeah, those, that, that's all a great tech stack. Um, truth is my wife and I operate together. I'm more of the setup side. She does a lot of the tech stack, um, and the communication, but generally whenever we set up a brand new area, um, we get boots on the ground. We start immediately diving into, um, we try to to reach out to the previous owners or tent or this is a single family. family. Cool. Um, in that case, I would be more focused. I would still check Google. I'd usually go, I, I'm kind of nuts. I always want to know who my maintenance people, my cleaners are going to be, um, contractors, et cetera. Um, I'll typically go to Google. I'll type in every variation of a contractor in that local area. I'll usually call 30 people, um, see how the conversation goes. I'll take notes on the conversation, what they're, what they do. I say, Hey, I see you advertise this. Do you do anything else? And another key question is, do you do, do you, who else do you work with that is one of the other contract, um, types of labor, uh, that you love working with and then I'll get their number. So you're also, you're also able to pull from like their roster of people that they enjoy working with or have had positive experiences. Um, that gives you another chance to kind of pull those in. Um, because I really think it's your team on the ground that really keeps you running, especially when you're about like our California property that's been with Eric actually. Um, yeah, that one's been such a, a challenge because the environment, um, of the non, vacation people it's pretty transient um fortunately there's a lot like a lot of drug use and that's and a lot of 
challenge. Just a lot of challenge. You finally have some good people, but that's it. Another thing I think you should do is go on uh, Facebook groups, type in your major city metro and say contractors or investors or things like that. And once you're once you find that 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 little group, that little niche group that you're looking for, um, to be say, hey, uh, it's a mecca, yeah. Um, hey, this is mecca. Like, just got a place around here looking for these trades. Can anybody help me out? I'd be much appreciated. Um, and I I did that my last few, and I usually get like forty comments. Um, and usually, you know, half of those are referrals. So referrals are always the best. Like if you just go, I'm really great at this. I'm like, great, cool, awesome. But if somebody goes, I've had a great experience with this person, then somebody like goes, like, 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 oh my God, yeah. Uh, Mecca was so great with how we did our flooring or whatever. You know, you, then it becomes like, all right, this is the person I obviously need to call. So that's a, that's a really good way to go out and find some contractors when you're doing, doing the remote thing. Um, beyond that, uh, if you build if you build a big enough team locally or wherever you want to be, I got some people that will just fly out with me and go help me set these things up now because I've built that trust, that respect. And honestly, um, you might save more money by paying for that plane ticket is what, what I've been learning because you don't have the gamble of, are they going to do well by me with the furnishing, the setup? Um, you don't have to worry about, you know, are the, is that other person truly skilled? Are you going to run off with my money? I, you know, there's, there's pros and cons. You can, if you are a great relationship builder locally, you can pull off some pretty amazing things as you scale. But like, if you do keep going with the STR world, like just absolutely focus on scale because doing one or two, just like in long-term rentals. I don't know if anybody has a single family long-term rental, like you didn't stop at one, right? you like, you have to just keep going before, you know, you enter the multifamily space and that's, probably why most of us are on this call right so who do you use turnover bnb yeah oh yeah that's on every unit um turnover bnb has been great for connecting with cleaners but sometimes we like to find our own we're actually working on building our own in-house cleaners for the local area um that's been great we actually don't use price labs we use beyond pricing um very similar very just a little bit different we had a relationship with them so we just stuck it out um but quite quite the same. In fact, on the eight unit in California, um, by just turning on beyond pricing, um, improving some of the photos, doing some of the deferred maintenance, um, tweaking some of the listing uh, descriptions, uh, we started seeing you know nearly a fifty five percent higher NOI um, just by doing a better job with our pricing model. The other these old mom and pop owners, uh, when it comes to the short term rental space, they don't. Some of them were fixed price. Um, so they would just say, hey, this is a number that sounds good. And, you know, it's close to, if you've heard of Coachella, it's close to where that event takes place. Oh, and so, yeah, yeah. So during closing, the guy's like, you ever heard of that Coachella? And I was like, yeah, I heard yes. of Coachella. <laughs> and he goes, he was like, I was booked solid for almost three weeks. And I was like, that's great, man. At what rate? He's like, what do you mean? I was like, I'm always at 150. And I, I was like, <laughs> I was like, we're, we're gonna we're gonna clean up for that Coachella, so we're looking forward to that Coachella. It'll be good. It'll be good. So yeah, that's why that's why the pricing tool is huge, because and just for the folks that don't know what that is, um, it helps. It's an algorithm that helps you figure out what the occupancy and vacancy rates are of all the local um, short terms hotels, motels, whatever, right around you. Um, so you can have a higher chance of you know, raising that price within seconds of data changing on, you know, the Google, throughout Google or any search results. Because sometimes you as a human, you can only keep up with so much data, right? You can only process it. What if an event cancels? What if an event um, comes out of nowhere in the last week or and that you see tickets or meetme.com is starting to do these things. It, it factors all those crazy, all of the many bookable events and occupancies of all these other units like within seconds, like we can't do that. Um, I got some friends in Ann Arbor, Michigan, um, that they are able to do it pretty well. Um, but then we compare it with some folks that are doing the dynamic pricing tool and the dynamic pricing tool is still beating them out. It's amazing that they do such a great job with their occupancy as just using their human touch. Um, but for a pricing tool to take all that thought train out of it, and they probably spend, they probably spend a couple hours a, a week just thinking about it. Like remove that if you don't need to, and something else is doing it just as good or better. Remove that. Um, I, I I don't know what your margins are, Mecca, but like 
Um, if, if you're generally doing well right now, you know, and also we do audits. So if people are ever like, hey, I got a listing. I don't know if somebody would be interested in auditing it for me. We can spend some time with you guys. Um, kind of tell you what we see is good, bad, or missing. Um, and we might just tell you, man, you're amazing at this. You're, you should just keep duplicating these efforts and you can really scale from there because that's kind of what we did. And by the way, our very first unit, it was this week that we just redid it. Uh, we went in there with the intent to replace like some old coffee tables, lights, couch, just because after five years, just, well, almost five, well, four, four and some years in our first attempt ever at furnishing, it just looked it was our ugliest unit. I don't know how we have a 4.7 on it at this point. It's just hideous. <laughs> um, but as we got in there, uh, we said, it's going to be a one day turnaround. We're bringing the whole staff. We're going to go just crush this thing. But after getting most of that stuff switched out, we're like, these TVs are garbage. Yeah, I, I can't believe it. This, it, this is this is a one-off, but we had scratches on our TV and we couldn't tell. Nobody told us. I was like, how are we keeping good ratings? And we checked <sighs> the kitchen. And when most of the pots and pans were all scratched up, missing silverware, I'm like, we're getting this, we're getting this. And so now it's been four days in a row going back there. And now it's literally everything is new. Everything is new. We replaced light fixtures, replaced some faucets. Um, it's amazing because you'll have guests that you could have a brand new, beautifully rehab unit and they'll have complaints. And sometimes you'll have an age old winner and they don't care, which is funny because sometimes it depends on who your market um, is appealing to, uh, what kind of guest uh, demographic you're appealing to and I, has anybody ever wondered who stays at airbnbs everyone probably all sorts right that you're getting that just that just showed me rob is you're ready to go veteran on strs because it's the number one like i get a lot of people that call in and they go hey can you set me up with an airbnb because we have a turnkey airbnb company up here with my wife um people who want stuff in michigan particularly we will find it rehab it furnish it run it and they just make money. But almost every time I get that question, they go, so who stays at these Airbnbs? And I'm like, all right, hold my beer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the whole story. And it, the, one of my favorite stories is actually one that I have with Eric. Uh, we have that one in Taylor, um, Beach Daily. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it, that's, our, that's the one that like, we don't really like, but it makes money. <laughs> like I really thought about shutting it down just because like we get annoyance, too many annoyances over there. Um, and it, for whatever reason, but we have this one guy, he's a, he's, he's sick in the head. Um, love him though. He, uh, he gets season tickets to the lions. He moved out of state and he flies back for every game, stays in that Airbnb, drives down 94 to watch him play, gets back in the Airbnb and then flies out the next day. I've never seen a man do such a terrible thing to himself. It's, I mean, it's just, it's just painful. I, mean, I was like, Hey, Bob, good to, good to see you again. Well, he's like, yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we win today. I'm like, I hope for you, they win today too, man. Good luck. Have, have a, have a, have a good stay. He's like, always good here. Thanks, Matt. Talk to you soon. See you next week. I was just like, Oh my God, this guy. So yeah, we've seen people do that. We've seen people that they don't like doing laundry in their own home. So they'll come to your home to do laundry because they want to be, they want to do laundry in a clean space. So they feel like they can get their head cleared out. It's their hotel vibe, but like in a more of a homey thing. Um, we see tons of couples do joint stays. We've seen a lot more funerals this year, actually. Um, wedding related things. We're actually starting to see about targeting a wedding venue uh, focus. Um what else do we see a lot of? We used to see a ton of traveling nurses. Anybody who's betting on traveling nurses, I think is kind of like they lost it. They're, they're missing the whole point that that's not a thing anymore. It's it's a very, it's a, it, as quickly as it blew up, it's dying pretty similarly. Like I know a handful of traveling nurses, but I know a lot of them have said, hey, it's kind of, it's just settled down. So I'm just going to stick it out at home now. So don't bet on that. I do think hospital proximity is still a value though. So I, I don't want to like not say that, but. Um, beyond that, um, as for who stays there, again, it's it's anybody and everybody. We see, you know, kids, um, you know, trying to have their first party. Uh, we were pretty good at vetting those conversations. You know, it's it, it's. A, I remember as a, as an Airbnb guest before I had one, people would ask, "Why are you staying here?" And I was like, "None of your damn business. Like, it doesn't matter why I'm staying here." It was used to bug me, but now I appreciate that question. 
because some people will just tell you like hey are you 420 friendly like uh we're planning to have a party and then there's like no like and that's that we have it explicitly written our, written our like smoke anything it must be outside if any smell is left lingering any damage blah, blah that's on you and you agree to pay for damages and the truth is str is not for the weak of stomach we've seen every bodily excrement and fluid show up in a house um we've seen uh people say to us with a straight face on like, like there's no way we don't, we never smoked a day in our life and we're walking around picking up like huge buds of weed all throughout the house um my one friend they had I, I i'm just telling you facts here so that, you know this isn't for the squeamish but they had there's a full out orgy party and there was they even did it on the porch there was a ring doorbell that was captured um there was cocaine everywhere 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 it was crazy but now that you know all the bad i can tell you that uh, it's probably one out of a thousand nights of stays is how many issues we have so as as crappy as those stories are um one out of a thousand isn't bad and even if it was one out of a hundred i'll take it um so it's actually one, our one out of a thousand numbers not working anymore it's probably it's probably it's definitely one out of a few hundred at this point um there was a time if it was about like that but it, we do so much that we see and we see so much now and some of those issues are just house issues like your hvac system your ac is acting up and it has nothing to do with the guest it's just your house has some issues which is just normal maintenance wear and tear type stuff so um and as for people that are worried about like, how do you keep up on them think about it like if every let's say you have two to three checkouts per week um, you have your cleaners in there literally two to three times a week, let you know what's good, bad, or ugly. And they send you pictures of, you know, if, if you train them to do that, they send you pictures of what's going on. So you're getting eyes on your property all the time. So I, I really think the STR world has been great. Um, and it's funny because I have a, I have a long-term property management company as well. We have probably about 120 units. And with that, we've seen a big tick up in evictions and light payments in the last four or five months so we're probably looking at like 15 percent and people being behind um and you know I'm, I'm expecting that number to increase so all that being said somehow airbnb through covid for us was strong i it was actually we were, we were pretty sure okay let's just let's just keep playing the music while the sink ships here it's, it's over for us and it was the only thing that came out super strong and that's kind of when we said you know we're going to double down on this and that's why we're here now Hey, Matt, speaking of that, first of all, let me say thank you for being here and thank you for incredibly valuable information here. Um, speaking of uh, what you'd mentioned that you've seen an uptick of, I think you said 15% of late payments and evictions in the last uh, few months with the long-term stuff. Do you see any, I mean, no one has a crystal ball, but do you see anything happening in the future with short-term rentals because of the economy or because of whatever it's going on with the recession or whatever? Do you see anything in the future happening or what's your take on, or what's your even last few weeks or last few months, what's your take on what's been happening with short-term rentals? Um, great question. I've been getting that a lot lately. Um, I didn't get into the STR space to be done in the next year or two, right? Nobody should. You don't buy a long-term rental to hold it for three to five years either, right? Um, our goal, like I, I'm, I fully, this is my take on, on the longevity of it. I fully believe we're going to see um, some pull away, maybe a uh, lower occupancy and stays over the next 10 years. But I want to give you an example um, or, or of Disney World Orlando. Harley has the most density of increasing units. Um, almost, I think, I think there was like, a, there, there's units added every week, maybe every day, which is just mental to me. Um, but they're all still booked. They're all still booked. It's, probably, it's clearly one of the most densely populated like STR uh, cities out there, but it keeps going. But also, iron sharpens iron, right? So the quality of air, of those STRs, I try not to say Airbnb because that's the marketing platform, but it's, it, the game's so commonplace. Um, of those STRs has grown tremendously. You go to almost any uh, 4.8 or higher um, STR in Orlando, you're going to go in there and you're like, oh my God, the Marvel theme in here is amazing. Oh my God, like the the way they did the Avatar stuff, or um, maybe they have uh, sleep, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs walking around all the, the, the place. There's so many cool things 
there's a ton of inspiration there. Even in Nashville, um, it's become like, you know, the Vegas of the East, you know, side of the, co the continent, right? Or the country. Um, and it's become like some of those STRs are amazing. They have waffle bars now. They have um, martini bars just built in. Everything just looks amazing. Um, and they're set up with, you know, it's their, their, their rage fest for some people, right? But up in, up here, for instance, we haven't been, I, I think where you, where you invest is going to be a big factor of how long it lasts too. So I know, I know Orlando is going to have a tipping point. It's got to, right? Um, I'm sure Nashville is going to have a tipping point. Vegas is going through some monster uh, regulation changes right, right now. And I'm thinking like, if they don't become like, because of how strong that hotel industry is there, Like, I am sure at some point that there's going to be some damage. Uh, oh, is is my internet? Can you hear me? Yeah, your internet was a little choppy there, Matt, for like a split second. But I, yeah, but we can hear oh. you now. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody froze. I wasn't sure. I was like, is it me? I think it's me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, you're back. It's like I was saying, uh, the hotel space in Vegas is... Uh, yeah, cool, perfect. It's a huge market. So I if I had to bet the hotel is gonna do everything they can to all right. Well, while Matt is getting his internet kind of together, maybe this would be the perfect time to go to a breakout room. Please put all of your info, all your networking info, all of your contact info in a chat that would be in the chat so that everybody can connect. That would be awesome. Um, and then we're going to go to a breakout room. We'll probably spend about 10 to 15, eh, maybe 10 to 13 minutes in the one breakout room. Um, and then we'll come back for um, just some positive promotions to end the, to end the time.